Good morning, good morning. Wonderful sunny day here in Halifax. A little chilly, <clears throat> but thank God he's alive. Anyway, we're going to start in a moment, and we're going to open up in prayer in a moment, and um, hope you, some people can join us now, and I know that some people will join us later. So, uh, lots to pray about, and we have prayer requests that have come to us, and uh, we have some good news. Somebody that we prayed for last year, I don't know, I mean last week, if you remember, Christy, she was missing for about a week, and, um, and guess what? <laughs> they found her. So, uh, and I'm not saying that the reason that they found her is because of, um, hi, Madeline, hope you're feeling better. And um, we'll be praying for you today. And um, so, you know, I'm not saying that they found her just because we pray, but I'm sure that a lot of people were praying, in, including Carol. Um, uh, so, um, and, and you know, and that's good. I believe in prayer. You know, I believe in prayer, and, uh, and I believe that, God answers prayer that according to his will. And his will is for none to perish, for nobody to, to be lost. So, uh, you know, thank God that Christ is found and we continue to pray for her and the family that um, his will will be done. You know, I don't know the details why she was missing and all of that, but the main thing is that she's alive and she's been found. So thank you for those that joined with us last week and pray for her. And we have other uh, prayer requests as well. You know, I want you to pray for our own Steve, our sound man. He's uh, not doing too well uh, physically. He will be here today, and we're going to pray for him as he comes. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of people going through stuff, you know. Um, so uh, we, we, ask, we ask the Lord to, um, to help us, and, uh, and we got to pray. You know, so we'll be praying for Madeline as well. She's under the weather today. Uh, Steve, and uh, we'll continue to pray for all the other requests here and for those that will join us now and for those that will join us later. You know, so I'm going to be finishing uh, Proverbs chapter 16 today. And I hope that um, the Lord will speak to us. And then today at 11 o'clock, we're starting the parables of Jesus. You know, and, uh, and amazing how the parables of Jesus can speak to us today. Because it was mostly about the future. It was mostly about um, helping us now and warning us about what's to come. So uh, let's open up in prayer today and we thank God for that. Father God, we thank you and we praise you that this is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, thank you, Father, that we belong to you. And Father, anybody that listens now and later, God, that don't belong to you, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that, Lord, that they will turn their lives over to you. And it's so easy to do so. To cry out and say, God, I tried on my own, but it's not working. So I surrender myself to you. I turn away from my sinful ways, and I embrace your, and I embrace your way, the righteous way, and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Forgive me for all my sins. And as we do that, O oh God, you cleanse us. So, Father, I pray, God, that if anyone that will listen later, O oh God, and don't know you, O oh God, I pray, God, that they will surrender their lives unto you because you are the answer to the world today. You will always be, you were, you are, and you will be always the answer to the world today because you are God. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We pray your blessing upon um, Madeline, Father God, as she's under the weather today. Give her a touch of heaven, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And bless her today. Strengthen her. Minister to her. Lord, the Word of God says that it's good that I've been afflicted, that I may learn the statutes of the Lord. So, Lord, you, we never go without learning something, whether we're in the mountaintops and we're in the valley, Whatever we may be, you minister unto us. And Father, we pray for our brother Steve, oh God, you know the situation there? We pray for wholeness. We pray for healing. We pray for strength, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And Father, we rebuke the forces of evil that will come against his life at this time, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Give him strength, Lord, your word says that the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead dwells in us. You shall quicken our mortal bodies by your spirit. And I, Father, I pray, God, that you will quicken his mortal body by your spirit, O oh God, in this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I pray for the service today at 11, Father God. Lord, we pray for a visitation of your spirit, O oh God, as we start this series on the parables of Jesus. And Father God, that you will anoint your word, that you will anoint the service, the worship, uh, the prayers, everything that will be said and done. And Father, that you will bless every individual that walk into these doors today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we pray for this region. We pray for COVID-19. We pray, God, for the economy. We pray for all of these things that are facing us today. We pray your blessing upon this nation, Father. Let this virus come to an end, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thou knowest the truth about all things, O God. But we pray, Father, for the economy of this, of this nation, my God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, a lot of things are shut down. Lord, business is shut down, going out of business and all of that. We pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will reverse everything that has taken place in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, that you will have your way, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Bless churches, Lord, as they come together tomorrow. Bless us, O oh God, and I pray, God, that we will hear from heaven. Lord, that we will deliver a message of the Lord in this hour to, to, to uh, everyone, Lord, that will listen, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, bless this nation. Lord, I know that you're bringing us back to our first love and our first works. I pray, Father, that we will not, we will not rebel against your spirit, O oh God. Lord, but we will submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ. So, Father, God, bless this nation, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let COVID-19 and all these things, God, be gone in the name of Jesus. Whatever the enemy has planned to do, destroy the works of the devil, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We also pray, Lord, for our neighbors, the USA. Lord, whatever happens there happens here. O oh God, we will be affected either way. We pray your blessing upon them and, and, and the government of our nation, oh God. You ask us to pray for those over us, oh God. Father God, the wrecked, oh God, I pray. Destroy the works of the enemy, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And then we also pray for the economy, oh God, of the world, of the U.S., Canada. God, in the name of Jesus, have your way, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, bless this portion of Scripture that we will read today, oh God, and be with every listener. Those that will listen now and those will come later, Father. They have needs. We all have needs. Without needs, we wouldn't need you. But God, thank God that we have needs and we can cry it out to you, O oh God. What a friend we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. That we can cast all our cares upon you, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ. So bless the listener, their homes, their families, O oh God. Bless them as individuals, O oh God. Bless them as uh, uh, the, their marriages, their relationship, their children, grandchildren, Father, their jobs, their finances. Heal them physically, spiritually, emotional, O oh God. In every way, O oh God. Let God arise in their homes and in their lives, O oh God, in this hour. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And have your way, O oh God. And Lord, work in us both to do and to will of your own good pleasure. We ask it in the mighty name of Jesus and Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Be Lord of our day today. Be Lord of our lives. Be Lord of the service and the teaching of God in this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God. And thank you, Father, that you are God that answers prayers and you care about people, O oh God. In Jesus' holy name, Lord, let the anointing of God fall upon us, O oh God. Uh, the anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, and set the captive free, O oh God. I release the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I loosen people, Lord, from the grips of hell and the lies of the enemy. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, those that may be deceived and, and believe the, the wrong report, not the report of the Lord, but God set them free. O oh God, I pray it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. 
and amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. God bless you. And we're going to continue. Last week we finished on uh, verse uh, 20, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's right. We, uh, we ended up in verse 20. Today we're going to start with verse 21. But let's read verse 20. He says, He who, uh, who pays attention to the word of God will find good. Oh my God. You know, I don't know about you, you know, thy word I love. You know, I love thy word. You know, I believe, you know, my prayer for everybody is that we will love the word of God. Because you cannot love Jesus and not love the word of God. Because the word of God is Jesus. You know, so in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So, you know, if we love Jesus, you got to love the word. Not the wisdom of the world, but you got to love the word. <laughs> he is the word, you know, and we got to love it. There is so much there. Every chapter, you know, has a mouthful, a mouthful. You know, every time that I read uh, one chapter, I says, my God, you know, if I only had this one chapter, I will be able to survive until Jesus comes. And that's the power of the word. The word has so much to give. And so much to reveal to us, you know, and, and I believe, you know, we cannot say that we love Christ and we don't love the word of God. You know, to love the word of God is to love Christ, you know. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful, you know, that I love the word of God. Thank you, you know, because, you know, man has nothing good in themselves but that which comes from above. So, you know, the desires that we have, you know, it's nothing brownie points for us. But I believe that God has brought us to to, through, through things in life so that we can come to a place of surrendering. You know, I thank God for the hard times. You know, and you got to thank God for the hard times too because the hard times is what makes us. It's not when we're on the mountaintops, but when we're going through stuff in our lives. That's, that's you know, like I said before, true praise is not when things are going well because even the world, even people that don't know God, they praise God when things go well. You know, but true praise is when things are not going well. So uh, we have to understand that. So uh, let's read now. We'll continue. We're going to do 21 to the end. Okay, and I'm going to skip maybe a couple of things, you know, here and there so we can. Anyway, we're going to flow with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we invited the Holy Spirit. And he's the one that wrote the Word of God. So, you know, and, and he wrote it as, uh, as men were inspired by the Spirit of God. So I hope that I'm inspired by the Spirit of God and I can sense His presence already. So he says, the wise, I'll be reading from the Amplified Bible, the wise in heart will be called understanding. Mm. And sweet speech increases persuasiveness and learning, and in brackets he says, in both a speaker and and listener. So, you know, he says, sweet, uh, sweet speech increases persuasiveness and learning in both a speaker and listener. You know, and I believe that what he's saying over here, you know, when we, when we speak, you know, uh, the reason that it will be a sweet speech, it will be because, you know, the, 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 um, the root of our speech shall always be love for other people, you know, you know, you know, when I'm, when I'm rough and when I'm tough with the, with the word of God, with what God gives me, it must be love. You know, it cannot be resentment, anger, bitterness, you know, preaching to a backslidden church or anything like that. Even though sometimes I may sound, you know, uh, harsh, you know, and I may come across as upset. Well, God is upset at times, you know, he, he's, he's our father, you know, he's not just violets and roses all the time, but I'm, you know, he weeps uh, for the condition of the world. He weeps for the conditions of homes and families and individuals. He weeps, he intercedes for us, the Bible says. So, you know, he's, he's a caring God. So, you know, everything, our speech, you know, should be always sweet. Meaning, you know, with love, you know, coming across well. So that way he says, you know, it, uh, increases persuasiveness. That means that you're persuading people to the Lord. And, you know, all our speech must bring people to Christ, not to ourselves, 
You know, we have nothing good in us but that which comes from above. So what does that mean? You know, not praise to me, but praise to God. So he says, you know, uh, increases persuasiveness and learning. And, uh, and he says in brackets, in both speaker and listener. So, you know, it's a blessing to both, to the one that gives it and to one that receives it. You know, and then verse 22, understanding. So in brackets, he says, spiritual insight. So that means that somebody that has understanding, and we should all have understanding, you know, we, we have spiritual insight. You see, you got to have insight. That's the reason that you have to be a, a student of the Word of God. You have to be. You have to be. You cannot, you cannot just go to the, the, the church and just listen to somebody else's um, teaching and believe only what they teach. What about if they're wrong in any way? You know, so you, ha you have to be a student of the Word of God like the Bereans were. So that way you have spiritual insight. Because if you have a spiritual insight to the Word of God, then you will have understanding. The Bible says, you know, let him that glory, glory in this, that he knows me and he understands me. Understanding is a powerful tool for us to be able to discern and to have the strength to go through hard times in life. A lot of times, you know, we, we uh, freak out. You know, we say, Lord, I want more of you. And then the Lord sends a, sends a trial to your life. And then we freak out and we say, hey, get us out of this mess. And, and, and then the Lord says to us, you know, what do you mean get, in, get you out of the mess? I mean, you ask me for more of you. And the, and, and the situation that you're facing right now is going to break you, it's going to mold you, it's going to fill you and give you more of me. You know, so, you know, we have to understand. That's why we have to have a spiritual insight. We have to have understanding because when we have understanding, then we understand that the trials of our, of our faith, as Paul said, works patience. And let patience have a perfect work in us that we may come to the place of contentment, of one in nothing. Oh my God, you know. So we need understanding, which is spiritual insight, is a refreshing and boundless wellspring of life to those who have it. <laughs> my God, you know. I just, been, I, I just finished uh, last week doing a, a cleansing. A detox cleansing, a flash of the body, which is good. It's all natural. No drugs involved in that. <laughs> and, you know, then you have a little more energy. You lose a bit of weight. All this good comes out of your body. You know, a cleansing. And over here it says, you know, uh, if you have a spiritual insight, you will have understanding. And it is refreshing and boundless. A wellspring of life to those that have it. So, you know, there is rewards to, to having understanding, to having a spiritual insight. And that's the reason, you know, the, 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 um, the Word of God has thousands and thousands of blessings for us. And, you know, if only we, we, we uh, have a spiritual insight so we can reap all the benefits of the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is Christ. The Word of God is God. You know, so, you know, the, you know, if one more of God, it's right here. You know, I mean, every chapter I tell you, as I've been doing this on, sa on Saturday mornings at 9 a.m., you know, I've been freaking out, you know, because I have no notes. <laughs> I have no notes. I'm just, you know, I'm inspired by the Spirit of God. But I find that every chapter has so much to give that only if I have one chapter, you know, for the rest of my life, I can survive <laughs> because it has so much to give there. Oh, hallelujah. So he says, understanding, uh, spiritual insight is a refreshing and boundless wellspring of life to those who have it. To have what? Understanding. To those who have spiritual insight into the things of God, into the Word of God. But to give instruction and correction to fools is foolishness. You know, you know, what, what does the Word of God says, you know, even in Proverbs, he says, you know, do not rebuke a fool because he will hate you. You know, so that means that when you give something, <laughs> give it <laughs> to the wise ones, to the ones that are hungry for the things of God. Because sometimes, sometimes, you know, we got to discern, you know, we sometimes, you know, we're trying to bring truth to a fool and then, you know, and then they get mad at you. 
right? So the Gemara, you say, the Gemara, you then stage left and then you just go to somebody that really wants the Lord. So he says, you know, but to give instructions and correction to fools is foolishness. In other words, it's useless. It's a, it's a waste of time. Uh, you know, this is one good thing for us to understand. The Word of God says this. The Word of God says, No man comes unto the Father unless the Father draws them unto him. You see, so it's not you pushing somebody to come to the Lord. You know, what, what are we? We, are, uh, we plant seeds and we water them. You know, that's your job. So, you know, what you have to say, you know, is you have to say, Lord, give me, give me uh, uh, opportunities for me to plant seeds to those that you have not talked to them before about the Lord. So plant seeds, give a testimony. You know, says, you know, I'll be praying for you. Or can I pray for you? And then, you know, you, you put a little bit of pressure on them and they say, yeah, I don't mind if you pray for me. Others will say, hey, I don't want you to pray for me. I want nothing of your God. So what is that telling you? That when you're planting a seed or you're watering it and there is a rejection to it, don't worry. It might not be their time. So right away, you know, have a little prayer list and put their name on it and pray for them that they will be open to the love of God, that they will be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right? So, you know, they, I mean, don't disqualify them. Just because they reject truth, whether it's your husband, your wife, your sons, your daughters, don't. You know, no, because there is a time for us to live and there is a time for us to die. There is a time, you know, and God is the one that does the drawing, not us. What we do, we plant seeds and we water them. So if somebody has accepted your truth and they're open to God, they might not want to be at your level of your Christian walk but they might receive uh, your, your instructions. And what you do is, is now you water them. Lord, help me not to do it in one day, but if you're going to see that person or talk to that person for a while, then you begin to water that, that seed that you have planted in their life. Because, you know, you might have planted it, but somebody else will water it. You may water it. Somebody else might water. And then the Bible says that God will give the increase. When? When God decides that that's time for them to come home. You know, just like I did. August 18th, 1980. That was my day that I came surrendering to the Lord. <laughs> I came from a religion to a relationship. Amen. You know, I always believed in God, but I didn't live for God. I thought that I was living for God, but I was uh, deceived. Right? Because, you know, uh, religion doesn't save us. A relationship with God saves us. Because when we have a relationship with, that, with God, we have a spiritual insight. And if we have a spiritual insight, then we'll make the right choices in life. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll walk in righteousness, making right choices. We repent of our ways. You know, we don't choose a life of sin and so on. Anyway, let's continue over here. This is good stuff, I tell you. That's the reason, that, you know, I can have one chapter and survive for the rest of my life. Anyway. So uh, verse 23, it says, The heart of the wise instructs his mouth, and in brackets it says, in wisdom, and adds persuasiveness to his lips. So this is very important. You know, this is, you know, garbage in, garbage out. You know, so you put good things in, good things will come out. And it says over here, The heart of the wise instructs his mouth. And in brackets, it's in wisdom. So that means that you got to make sure that whatever you put in is good stuff. Put the wisdom of God in, inside of you. Thy word have I hid, where? In my heart. You know, the heart is desperately wicked. And we talked about last week about, you know, the, uh, the heart. You know, that God wants to ask for us to be born again. That means that he wants to take the stony heart of our life and give us all one heart, a new heart, and place his spirit within us, right? So what happens then, what, what happens when we do that, when we, you know, the Bible says that he has been made wisdom unto us. The Bible also says, you know, that if we lack wisdom, let us ask God for wisdom and he will give it to us. Right over here, so he says, the heart of the wise instruct his mouth. So if my heart is wicked, what's going to come out of my mouth? wickedness if my heart is full of lies what's going to come out of my mouth uh, lies 
if my heart has the love of God, you know, and I'm in love with Jesus and I know his word and all of that, what's going to come out? Your love for Christ, right? And you will not be ashamed of it and all of that. So that's why it's important what we place inside of us. The Bible says, you know, Jesus said, he says, it's not what goes in that defiles a person, but it what comes out. Why? Because the heart, the heart, the heart, you know, we got to work in our heart. You know, we got to work in us that we have the wisdom of God. So I'll read it again. His heart, the heart of the wise, instruct his mouth and adds persuasiveness to his lips. You see what I'm saying? So what, what, what happens is this. If you put good things in, good things will come out. So you, 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 uh, you will instruct. The wise instruct his mouth. That means that whatever comes out of his mouth will be good things. The wisdom of God, the testimony of God who God is and all of that. So, you know, we got to be full of the Lord for us to be able to speak about him. Anyway, so verse 24, pleasant words are like a honeycomb. You know, it's talking about what we speak, right? Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet and delightful to what? To the soul, to the spirit and healing to the body. Oh my God. I mean, I can talk about this for the next week. You know, you have to understand this. You know, the, the whole Bible, you know, it's good to understand the whole Bible. <laughs> you know, because when you read these things, other scriptures come to mind. He says, look at here. He says, you know, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet and delightful to the soul and healing to what? To the body. You know, I, you know, when we take communion, we're planning to have communion next week here. So when we take communion, what do we do? The Bible says, you know, make sure that you have no unforgiveness. Make sure you deal with, with any, any accounts that you may have with others, that there is no, um, uh, you know, resentment, bitterness, you know, whatever, you know, so deal with it. It says, because if you don't, it says, that's the reason that many are sick. Come on. That's the reason that many are sick and many die before it's time. You know, so we have to understand that, that if we have foolishness, if we have sin, if we have hatred, if we have the resentment and unforgiveness and all of these things coming out of our hearts, then those are not pleasant words, right? Because, you know, what's in the heart will come out through the mouth. But it says over here, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweet and delightful to the soul and healing to the body. You know, a lot of sickness, listen to this, not all sickness, but a lot of sickness I believe, you know, that is caused because of resentment, bitterness, uh, uh, unforgiveness in our hearts, and then it manifests in a sickness. But over here he's talking about being a, a person of understanding, of wisdom, uh, placing the right things within our hearts, because when we do that, it, it, the words will be sweet and delightful to the soul and healing to the body. The best remedy... Uh, to our bodies is the word of God. The best remedy, the best medication to, to our bodies is the word of God. You know, I mean, by his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we were healed. And sometimes, you know, we have anger, we have resentment, we have bitterness, we have all of these things that, that, that God cannot give you good health. You know what I'm saying? We have to forgive, we have to forget. And if the person is alive, you know, call them up, make amendments, no matter, no matter what it costs you, it costs Jesus his life for you to have life. So, you know, what's a phone call and, and humble yourself and say, you know what, you know, we haven't talked to uh, each other for a long time. I forgive you and please forgive me. You know, uh, you know, that's not right for us to live with unforgiveness or anger and resentment and all of these things, you know. And, uh, and then, you know, if you don't know where the person is and you've been, uh, and you've been abused uh, physically, or spiritually, in whatever way you have, forgive, let them go. I mean, you know, you're not causing them any harm, but you're causing yourself some sorrows. You're causing loser sleep in your life. And at the same time, it can affect you physically. You know, it can affect you physically. You know, when, when people, you know, they can pray for you, for your healing, right? 
But if you have things that you, you're holding on and you're not letting go, that can be the very thing that will hinder your, your healing. You know, I've seen many people when they release the unforgiveness and they forgive, when they release the anger, when they release these things, then healing comes to, our, to us. So sweet and delight to the soul and healing to the body. And uh, verse 25, the verse 25 is the highlight of all of this. He says, you know, uh, this is a power of a scripture. I always quote it for the past 20, 30 years. He says, there is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him. So there is a way that seems right unto man. And then he says, but the end is the way of death. Oh my God. You see, that scripture alone shall cause us to fear the Lord should cause us to uh, not hold any resentment or any bitterness or anything like that because that we might miss heaven, we might miss the rapture, we might miss the blessings of God while we're here, so we might, we might be robbed. What does the Bible says in John 10, 10, 10, 10? That the thief comes to what? To steal, kill, and destroy. He's a thief. You know, he wants to steal your blessing. He wants to steal your healing. He wants to still, you know, for you to grow in God, your maturity in the Lord and the wisdom that you can, you can learn. He wants to steal all of that. He wants to rob you because the Bible says that he's a thief. You know, he's a father of lies. He's a father of, 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 of thieves and all of that. So, you know, if, if you know that, then you have to be aware of that and, and, and say, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be careful. You know, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to walk in righteousness. Uh, why? Because the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. I tell you, I have never seen so much deception as I see it now. From la I mean, last year and this year, I see it all over. Different gospels, different doctrines, different this and different that. I mean, it's just amazing and how people are so easily deceived easy easy deceive you know the bible says you know be trees of right righteousness planted by the lord being in the word of god you know so that way we are not tossed to and fro from any wind of doctrine any wind of doctrine right so what happens when we are not planted by the lord when we are not trees of righteousness planted by the lord then what happens Wind of doctrines come and we get deceived. I mean, right now, you know, we're praying for a, for a lady uh, and, uh, and a fellow that he's way off. And uh, because he's way off, you know, she has been affected, right? And now, you know, she's cut off her mother. She's cut off her pastor. And now she believes that, you know, the, they believe that they don't, they don't need to go to a church because they are the church. Yes, we are the church, but we need a fellowship. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of, of, of coming together. Why? Because that's protection for you. Other people are there watching you. Accountability. Then you have a shepherd or leadership over you to protect you, not to control you, anything like that. So what happens when somebody tells you, when somebody tells you, you know, you don't need church anymore. Oh, you can have church at home. Oh, you don't have, you don't need a pastor. You don't need this and that. Then you're doing everything contrary to the word of God. Because the Bible says, submit yourself one to another. Submit yourself to the authorities. Submit yourself. I mean, what happens when you get married? You know, somebody has to give you premarital classes. But I mean, there is a deception out there that they don't need church. They don't need pastors. They don't need leaders. They don't need anybody. That is a spirit of witchcraft. That is a spirit of, uh, of rebellion. That's a spirit of deception. And, you know, and, and it's so easy to get into that. And then, you know, there's a whole list, you know, they, of different doctrines, different gospels. Gospels of prosperity, gospels of this, gospel of convenience, you know, no gospel of repentance, you know, and, and different gospels. Then you have... Uh, Forms of godliness by denying the power of it. You know, forms and doctrines of devils, you know, seducing spirit. I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, Jesus spoke about these things and in the last days, these things will happen. 
You know, and you know, when I get into the scripture, I, 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 I get so focused into it because I see it every day. I see, you know, I know friends, I know pastors, you know, that are way off, you know, that are way off and still preaching and people, you know, and still following them and everything like that. So, you know, then uh, racism, you know, then, uh, you know, endorsing things that are contrary to the word of God. I mean, there's so much garbage that have come into the church of God. Why? Because the churches have dropped their guard. They're not fighting for truth. They're not fighting for the word of God. That's why I say, you know, it's not what, I, what I'm against, but it's what I'm for. And what am I for? I am for the word of God. I am a student of the word of God. And this is the only thing I'm going to rely upon. Am I going to make mistakes? Many, and I hope somebody rebukes me when I make a mistake because I want to go to heaven and I want to please God and I want to walk in his ways. I want to walk in righteousness. I want to walk in holiness. I want to walk in his ways so that way I, I can endure to the end. The Bible says that he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So the contrary to that, he says, he that doesn't endure to the end. Enduring to what? Not surviving physically, but it's surviving spiritually. So that way you have the truth of the word of God, the true gospel in your life till he comes. Because when you have the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you are in the right standing with God. Then you understand. You have understanding. You have wisdom. You fear the Lord. You know, you, you walk in his ways. You, are, you understand that you're no longer your own. You belong to him. You know, and you understand that we have nothing good in ourselves but that which comes from above. You know, so, so you know, we, we, we have all of that when we, are, when we choose to go all out for Jesus. But, you know, there is a way that seems right. You know, that's your way seems right. Are you following the doctrine of a man? Are you following everything that they said and you, do not re and you do not research for yourself in the Word of God? Remember, the Holy Spirit wrote the Word of God. So, you know, it's very easy. If you believe that you're a Christian, you believe that the Holy Spirit lives in you, hey. So the one that wrote the Word of God lives with inside of you. So begin to pray, begin to fast, begin to intercede and say, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, reveal the Word of God. Reveal what the preacher preached. To see if that's true or not. And then if it's true, say amen. And if it's not true, then okay, then I understand, you know. You know, man has flaws, right? And, you know, what about if they're preaching out of a uh, hurt, out of a disappointment? So what happens, they're giving you a little bit of not full truth. You know, it might sound good, but it might not be full truth. And then you say, okay, I believe that, right? So what happens, you know, uh, is, you know, the devil has been working for 6,000 years, okay? The Bible says that he will deceive nations. So if he can deceive nation, he can deceive an individual. So be careful, please, please. We're living in the last days, and, you know, we can go anytime. You know, recently, you know, and God just, I mean, passed away, you know, uh, uh, 56 years old. Sometimes they're 40 years old. Sometimes they're 30 years old. Sometimes they're 80 years old. Sometimes they're 20 years old. We never know when our time is up. You know, but when our time is up, we better be ready. And we better make sure that we are in the truth. Religion will not save you. The Word of God has the true gospel. Find it there. Live it, you know, because the Bible says, you know, that He's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. He's coming back for a church that is holy. The Bible says, you know, be ye holy for I am holy, saith the Lord. You know, for without holiness, no one will see the Lord. How, you know, how can you believe that scripture and yet live an holy life, an righteous life, lying, cheating, you know, all of these things. How can we live the opposite to the word of God and expect for us to be in the truth. That's the reason that he says there is a way that seems right. You know, so is your way the right way? Are you living a lie? Are you living, a, you know, a, a, a gospel of convenience? Are you rejecting the things that you don't want to change and you're embracing the things that you want to, that you want to embrace? You know, very important. So, I, you know, I can spend a week in this one here, but let's go to uh, verse 26. It says, the appetite of a worker works for him for his hunger, for his hunger urges him on. Verse 27. 
a worthless man devices and dig, digs up evil. Oh my God. So a worthless man, a worthless man devices and dig, digs up evil and the words on his lips are like a scorching fire. You know, we have to be careful. We have to be careful, you know. How do we, how do we judge a person? You know, it's by, you know, we will know them by their fruits. We will know them by their love. You know, we have to be careful what comes out to make sure that that's all scriptural, right? You know, don't, 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 don't be careful with that because, you know, there is a, a evil, as you know, in the past year or so, it has come out in the open. The devil is not hiding anymore. He's coming full force, you know, the things that, that you know, 40 years ago were, or 50 years ago and 60 years ago where the world was totally against. Now, you know, it's all good. <laughs> you know, the Bible says that in the last days, you know, they will call good evil and evil good. Imagine that. If you preach the whole truth of the Word of God, you're evil, you know. But if you embrace embrace sin and and same sex and uh, and all of these things and abortion and, and and all of these things that is happening today you know and you know i just read yesterday that uh, uh, a young fellow a student of university in the u.s got kicked out or suspended because he says men are men and women are women you know <laughs> he said that <laughs> and the university Suspended him for saying that, and now they're forcing him to change his uh, vocabulary. Imagine that. So imagine that happening 50 years ago. It will never happen, but it's happening now. Why? Because the devil is coming full force because he knows his number is coming up. He's going to go out, and he's going to be tormented day and night for, the, for eternity. For eternity, imagine that. He knows his time is coming. So that's the reason that he's not hiding. And he's using people. You know, the evil is coming out of people. What was in their hearts is coming out. You know, let's pay attention to that. Let us have discernment. Let's have understanding. So be careful with that. So verse 28, a perverse man spreads strife and one who gossips separates intimate friends. You know, oh my God, gossip. I don't know, you know, like, I cast that devil out of people, you know, like, you know, it happens so much in churches, so much in churches, blah, 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 you know, they can't live without gossiping, all this and that and that, they talk against each other, they talk against the leadership, they talk against pastors, the pastors talk against people, all of these things, just so much gossip, and the Bible says that one of the things that God hates is one that causes discord among brethren. You know, and, 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 and if you rebuke somebody, you know, <laughs> that, that does that, they get mad at you, you know. I mean, you know, if, if I was gossiping, I, I want somebody to tell me, to tell me so that way I can repent from it because, you know, what is a blind spot? A blind spot is a spot that is there, but you cannot see it. But others around you can see it. So, you know, that's what I'm saying, you know, like, that's the reason that we need to be among people. That's the reason that we need to be in churches. That's the reason that we need to have fellowship with others. That's the reason that, we, you know, whether it be Zoom, whether it be a, a home cell group, or whether it be a coming into a body of believers in a church and that, you need that. Why? Because sometimes people around you can see a blind spot in your life and they can say, you know, brother, sister, you know, what, you, what you're doing is wrong. Really, I didn't know that. You know, one fellow said, you know, recently, he says, I didn't know that having sex uh, uh, <laughs> before marriage is bad. You know, you know why? Because that's, that's, that was his belief, right? So, uh, you know, so, you know, it's good to, uh, <laughs> it's good to speak the word. It's good to um, be aware of our surroundings, you know, but the devil is coming out full force. So anyway, 29, a violent and exceedingly covetous, Man entices his neighbor to what? To sin. And leads him in a way that is not good. They, you know, a violent and exceedingly covetous man. You know, and we're talking as well about deception. You know, somebody that has a, a lot of charisma. You know, you know look, look at those people, you know, from the past. Jim Jones and all of that, that led a whole congregation to commit suicide. Look at the Waco, Texas. You know, that, that he led the people astray 
you know, he, he, had the, he had the charisma, he had the Jews, but he didn't have the truth, right? So that, that's the reason that we have to be so careful what we invite in, what teachings we, we accept. So he says, you know, a violent man and exceedingly covetous man entices his neighbor to sin and leads him in a way that is no good. He who is, who winks his eyes, that's not, does so to plot perverse things. And he who compresses his lips as if in secret signal brings evil to pass. Well, you know, that's a lustful, you know, movement. And, you know, when you go to church and a guy, you know, just winks the eye to the, uh, to the opposite sex, you know, that's very disrespectful. So if somebody does that, I mean, it's disrespectful to, uh, <laughs> you know, some things. So over here, you know, it's funny that the, the Word of God talks about these things. You know, he says, you know, uh, he who winks his eyes, that's so to plot perverse things. They say that, you know, in every joke there is a, tr there is a truth. In every wink, there might be an agenda behind it. So be careful. And if you wink, if you like to wink at people, stop winking at people. Okay? People are, you got to respect them. Right? So, and he who compresses his lips, as if in sicker signal, brings evil to pass. Verse 31. The silver hair head is a crown of a splendor and glory. You know, I, I do have, a, even though I have no much, I mean, I shave myself. But even though I have white hair there, I have, do, I have white hair there. So he says, you know, the silver hair head is a crown of a splendor and glory. It is found in the way of righteousness. So, you know, when he talks about these things, it's just talking about maturity, right? And, uh, and, that, and that is, you know, we, we cannot have a silver hair head is a crown of a splendor and glory. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's not, oh, I'm old and I'm going to die and this and that. No, you know, if you're serving the Lord, I tell you. That's a sign of wisdom. That's a sign of, uh, of uh, maturity, you know, and, uh, and people will listen to you. Maybe one day, you know, when I get older, I'll grow, grow myself a beard and, and let my hair grow, you know, white, you know. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. Anyway, so I don't think my wife would like that anyway. So uh, and then he says, verse 32, and we're almost done. He said, who, he who is slow to anger is better and more honorable than the mighty, and in brackets as a soldier. So he who is slow to anger is better and more honorable than the mighty, and he who rules and controls his own spirit than he who captures the city. The law is cast into the lap, and is every decision is from the Lord. So, you know, two things here are not close. That's the end of our chapter here. Uh, next week I might do the, uh, the, the seven things that God hates. I'm going to explain it one by one, and we're going to go on that, and that is in Proverbs as well. I think it's Proverbs chapter 6. So he says, he said, uh, he who is slow to anger is better and more honorable than the mighty soldier. You know, like, we have to realize that when we come to the Lord, we surrender all of our rights, all of our rights. You know, so we got, and if, you know, I might say that today, you know, is that, you know, if things causes you to anger, Right? people's attitude, the way they sing, the way they preach, the way they talk. You have to understand that in the surroundings that you see and it's bothering you, Watchman Nee said it in his book. You should read these books of uh, Watchman Nee, a spiritual man. He says, you know, if, if these things bother you, not in this, I'm not quoting him word by word, but I, it's from the book. And, uh, and he says, you know, if these, if these things bother you, is because you are not dead yet, <laughs> right? And that means that we have to die. We have to die to our anger and all of these things. So if, if things around us bother us, you know, don't get mad at the people that provoke you or they're doing these things. Look within. And it says, how come it's bothering me? You know, and I say, oh, yeah, okay. Then you find the root of what is bothering you and then you can deal with it. Uh, rather than being, you know, that being upset and lose your sleep over somebody singing too loud or somebody talking too much or somebody joking all the time, you know, sometimes the Lord will bring people around you to to uh, to activate something wrong in your life so that way you can deal with it 
and, and rather than get mad at the person that is provoking you, you know, we have to look within. You know, why am I reacting like that? Why did I get angry? Why did I get why did I get like this? Hey, God is dealing with you. So stop concentrating on them, concentrating you. You know, and says, you know, okay, you know, what is the root of this thing? How come I get angry? How come he bothers me? And then you bring it to the Lord. Say, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Forgive me, oh God. I have no reason. I have no, I have no rights. You know, when I come to you, I have given all my rights. And I, I might be pride, Father. It might be maybe the way I was treated when I was younger, whatever. But God, I surrender it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And if they, if they, if they are like that, Lord, they are your children. You know, who am I to judge them? Oh, God, to, to be like me, you know? Uh, what about if, if the way I am, I'm not right with you? You know, so if it's bothering me the way the children of the Lord are, then maybe God is trying to deal with me. So be careful with that. You know, that's, that's the reason that, you know, not everybody is at the same level as you are. And sometimes we might think that we are the higher level than others, but they might be in a higher level than you. Because if he bothers you, that means that you are not uh, spiritual as you think you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hope you get it. And, I, and we close with this. And he who rules and controls his own spirit than he who captures the city. So, you know, we, we have to control our spirits. You know, I believe in being emotional. I believe in all of that. But I believe in controlling my spirit. Because he says, you know, he, he says, you know, it, it is better for somebody to control the spirit than to take a city, right? So I mean, control your spirit, right? I mean, I, I, you know, I, I lately I've been doing the double steps. We've been playing some uh, old school worship, and we're gonna do that today as well. And I tell you, you know, the music it causes me to dance a little bit, right? Right? But at the same time, I don't go nuts, right? I control my spirit, right? Hallelujah. So uh, anyway, I'm going to leave that there. I don't want to upset anybody with this one here. We're going to leave it to the Lord. Lord, <laughs> just reveal that scripture. But you know, we need to control our spirits, right? It's good to be emotional, but make sure that our emotional is not out of place. Make sure that our emotions are in place as we control our spirit. Amen? Because we ought to be controlling our spirit. Amen? Glory be to God. I mean, you know, I'm, I have a Spanish blood in me. You know, I went to uh, preach at a conference, pastor's conference a couple of years ago in Ontario, you know, before COVID. <laughs> and we have revival. You know, I tell you, and they danced unto the Lord, and man, the whole church was loose everywhere. And it was beautiful because that, that, that was the way the Holy Spirit was working in all of us. And we all participated. There was a, one movement uh, or orchestrated by the Spirit of God. But uh, when, when everybody, everybody's quiet and one is going differently, then, you know, control the Spirit. Go by the mood of the atmosphere, right? I used to have a fellow, you know, in the church, you know, that uh, he will come and everybody will be singing and he will be singing so loud. Loud, 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 and it will be, you know, he will interrupt others because, you know, this, he didn't require for, for him to sing that loud, but he did, <laughs> right? So, you know, you love them up <laughs> and you say, Lord, you know, just help them, <laughs> right? So we got to control and we have to be sensitive to the move of the Spirit of God in our life. I mean, if you're by yourself, be yourself, you know, and be yourself in church too. You know, and, uh, and, and may, you know, be yourself. Uh, you know, I will never tell somebody, you know, not to be like this and not to be like that. Of, of course, unless they're really out of order, right? Then I can, I can speak to their life. So let's pray. Father God, right now, I thank you for the teaching. I thank you for this word. And I ask you, Father God, that you will speak to our hearts as you have already during this section. Oh God, of, uh, as we close uh, Proverbs 16, I pray, God, that we will mature in you. Oh, God, there's so much. I mean, we only did uh, just over 10 verses, but there's so much to be said, oh, God, in these 10 verses. And the whole chapter had over 30 verses. Oh, God, you have said so much in three weeks. Oh, God, I pray, Father, number one, that we will understand the power that is in the Word of God, that if we only took time to read the Word of God and to pray the Word of God and to read it out loud, so it goes to our subconscious and then the Holy Spirit can use it. 
So, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that you will help us mature in you, Father. Demolish the lies and deceptions, the wrong gospels, the wrong teachings away from us. And let us return to the Word of God in the name of Jesus to be good students, students of the Word of God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that, Lord, your Word says that the Spirit of God, the, the Holy Spirit, is the Spirit of truth which will guide us to all truth and will tell us what is yet to come. Oh, Father, help us to be in the truth. Lord, if there isn't a deception, any lies that we have believed, we pray, Father, that you will correct us by your Spirit and we will be able, Lord, to have the truth, the true gospel, truth of the Word of God, no matter what is being taught to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless every home, every family. Oh, God, I pray, Father, that as people, Lord, Forgive and, 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 and let go of things. Father, I pray that healing will come to them spiritually, physically, emotionally, and even financially, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that we will not be an obstacle, that the things that we resent and we hold in our hearts will not be an obstacle to the blessings of God in our lives. But God, that you will help us remove those obstacles in the name of Jesus, oh God, to fix Oh, God, relationships and that, that we may not fall to be in a way that seems right, but the end thereof is death. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. So, God bless you, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining us. Loretta there and, uh, and others, Joyce and uh, those people that are joining us. Thank you. God bless you. And, uh, and pass this, uh, this program around. You know, people need to hear the word of God. Don't be ashamed of Brother John. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. So may the Lord bless you and keep you and may his light shine upon you. Amen. And this is Brother John from Revival Hour. And guess what? I am fighting for you and your families. God bless you. Bye for now. <laughs>